I'm not ashamed. Why was the Lord angry with Moses? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. Wonders of his word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verses 10 to 17. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus chapter 4, beginning at verse 10. Then Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, O my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well, and look, he is also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand, with which you shall do the signs. In today's reading, we have Moses still standing on Mount Horeb speaking with God. God had appeared to Moses and told him to go to Egypt in order to free the children of Israel from bondage. Moses said that the children of Israel wouldn't believe him unless he gave them God's name. So God told Moses that I am had sent him. I am meaning the eternal, unchanging nature of God, an explanation of his name Yahweh or Jehovah. God told Moses that the children of Israel would listen to him once they had heard that I am had sent him. Moses, however, still wasn't convinced of this, so the Lord gave him three signs to use to prove that God had sent him. The first was turning his rod into a snake and back again into a rod. The second was changing Moses' hand leprous and then changing it back. And the third was turning water into blood. A heart that was willing to believe in God would see those signs and believe that Moses was sent by God. Now we come to verse 10 and find that Moses was still not convinced that he could fulfill God's commands. For up to that day, and even as the Lord spoke to him, he said that he was not an eloquent man, for he was slow of speech and slow of tongue. Slow of speech and slow of tongue could imply that Moses had difficulty finding the words to say, and when he found those words, he had difficulty saying them. We might call this stuttering or stammering today. Another suggestion is that Moses was nervous when speaking in front of larger groups of people or people of power, so much so that he could not find the words or utter them under those conditions. Eloquence is something that all public speakers desire, for many believe that that is what makes a good speaker. However, in actuality, a good speaker is one who speaks the truth in an understandable way. Eloquence is an added bonus, but not necessary to be a good speaker. Like with all of Moses' previous objections, God had the answer. He told Moses, didn't I create man's mouth? In fact, he had in Genesis chapter 1. God is the reason that we have speech, and according to Genesis 11, he is the reason that we have multiple languages. For after the Tower of Babel incident, he confounded our language so that people in different parts of the world would no longer be able to understand each other. Since the Lord has control over our senses, for he can make people blind or seeing, deaf or mute, he certainly could help Moses' eloquence and any speech impediment that he may have had. God said that he would be with Moses' mouth and teach him what to say. This should have been enough for Moses, but again it wasn't. This time Moses told the Lord to please send someone else by thy hand to do this. Moses had given excuse after excuse to the Lord as to why he shouldn't go, and each time the Lord had the answer. Finally, when he ran out of excuses, he simply asked the Lord to send someone else. It seems like Moses didn't believe that the Lord would be with his mouth here based on the Lord's response in verse 14. But needless to say, what Moses said angered the Lord. Today, God doesn't speak to us directly, for Hebrews 1 verse 1 says he speaks through his son Jesus, who in turn speaks through scripture. But he does command us to do things, namely obey his will. Who are we to argue with God, for God knows best? Moses, through a fixation on his speech, had a reticence of going, but he should have gone. He should have trusted in God to do what he said. God, even though he was angry, was going to accomplish his will. So he told Moses that his brother Aaron, who is more eloquent than Moses, would be his mouthpiece. 
The Lord told Aaron to come and meet Moses, and when he met Moses, he would be glad to see him. The way Aaron would speak is that the Lord would speak through Moses, who then in turn would give the words of the Lord to Aaron to speak to others. Both men would be inspired of God, so rejecting the words of these men would be equal to rejecting the words of God. This is how Moses would be God to Aaron. Not that Moses would be a God to Aaron, for there is only one God, but that Moses would have the words of God, and it would therefore be just as if God was speaking directly. God then told Moses to go and take his rod with him, for it would be used to perform the signs that God wanted him to perform. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 4, verses 18 to 23, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.